please rise and give a warm welcome to Professor Nash and our esteemed guests. Please have a seat. Professor Nash, Mrs. Nash, Professor Tong, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the open dialogue with Professor John Nash, Jr., Nobel Laureate in Economics. I'm Natalie So from Dawson Girls School, and I'm honored to be your MC this afternoon. Hailed as a campus legend at Princeton, and perhaps most known for his contributions to the game theory and discovering the Nash equilibria, Professor John Nash is one of the most influential mathematicians and economists of our world today, whose theories and equations have influenced how money is spent in today's world, evolutionary biology, politics, and even artificial intelligence. The Hollywood movie A Beautiful Mind showcases Professor Nash's mathematical genius, and in 1994, he was the recipient of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. We are extremely honored to have Professor Nash with us today. Professor Timothy W. Tong is the president of the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong and was previously the dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science at the George Washington University in the US. He is highly accomplished in the field of heat transfer and thermal and energy systems and has been recognized for his innovative teaching and leadership as Dean of SEAS. Without further ado, may I now invite Professor Tong to deliver the welcoming speech. Professor Nash, students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to this open dialogue with Nobel Laureate Professor John Nash. Hong Kong Polytechnic University is very proud to organize this event for secondary school students to have a chance to interact with Professor John Nash. But let me th first thank DGS and also congratulate Principal uh, Stella Lau for providing this wonderful venue for us to hold this event. And I must congratulate you and all your colleagues and students and alumni for having successfully renovated your school. This uh, new facility looks wonderful. Professor Nash is a senior research mathematician at Princeton University. And he's perhaps best known for his pioneering work on game theory, the mathematical study of strategies and decision making. Professor Nash's contribution defined and characterized the notion of equilibrium for games. This notion is often referred to as the Nash equilibrium. The underlying concepts have been applied to different fields of practice, as you heard earlier. Um, applications include market economics, computing, accounting, and many other disciplines. In 1994, Professor Nash was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in recognition of the value of the game theory in solving real world problems. At PolyU, we are keen to enrich students' experience through meaning meaningful activities like this open dialogue. We believe it is important for students to have role models to aspire to and Professor Nash is definitely one of the best. I'd like to also take this opportunity to share a piece of good news with you. Last Saturday, Professor Nash was conferred the honorary degree of Doctor of Science by Polly Yu. So I'd like to take this occasion to again congratulate Professor John Nash and welcome him to stage.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Professor Tong. The open dialogue will be, will be facilitated by Mr. Lucien Wang, Mr. Andy Liu, and Mr. Jacob Kaepyung. Mr. Lucien Wang is the champion of the senior division of the Hong Kong Federation of Youth Groups Standard Chartered Hong Kong English Public Speaking Contest 2011 and is now studying in year 11 at King George V School. He has also been a student facilitator in an open dialogue session with Professor Gabriel M. Leung, the director of the Chief Executive's Office, in late August at the closing ceremony of the Summer School for Effective Leadership at the University of Hong Kong. Mr. Andy Liu is the gold medalist of the International Physics Olympiad 2011, as well as gold medalist of the Australian Mathematics Competition 2010 and 2011. Currently, he is studying Form 6 at St. Paul's Coeducational College. Last but not least, Mr. Jacob Kapion is a second year international student from Denmark, pursuing his BBA program in marketing at PolyU. He travels a lot and has stayed in Shanghai for more than a year prior to his studies in Hong Kong. He also speaks Putonghua fluently. I'll now pass the time to our three facilitators. Professor Nash, it is really a great honor for us to meet you and learn from you, one of the most legendary mathematicians. I believe the majority of the audience has already learned a lot about you from various channels like your, bi like your biography and also the movie A Beautiful Mind. But it would be more amazing to hear you talk about your own life. We know that when you were in high school, you wanted to become an electrical engineer like your father. Later, you enrolled in college as a chemical engineering student. It was only after some time that you switched to mathematics major and pursued a lifelong career as a mathematician. What is it about mathematics that fascinates you so much more than other subjects do? Well, you know, some of those decisions were made on the basis of what was considered to be practical rather than what was considered to be most, uh, most attractive from another point of view. Like uh, the chemical to, to enter as a chemical engineer instead of electrical engineer. Well, uh, at that time, chemical engineering did seem to be a good field of study in terms of having a career with good income. And uh, the, the situation is it's still very good all this time. It's been a very good field of engineering. And uh, the switch from chemical engineering into chemistry was in part, on the other hand, because the difficulties in the program of study for chemi chemical engineering at Carnegie, at Carnegie Tech, where I was studying, there was a requirement of mechanical drawing, draftsmanship. And I found that difficult and impressive. The chemistry, which is science rather than engineering, seemed to be more attractive at that time. Then later on, there was the influence of the mathematics faculty. There was some well-known, there was a, a one or two well-known uh, figures in mathematics who were there at the time. Professor John Lighton Singh, for example, he was, he, he had come from Ireland and he later went back to Ireland, but he was there at the time and uh, he, he, he had influence on me and as well as Professor Duffin. And uh, it's not such a simple story how one shifts from one thing to another, but I, I always had, interest in mathematics even before, before high school level. Thank you, Professor Nash. So it seems that um, you have demonstrated your talent in mathematics at a very young age. Um, I guess the audience has uh, warmed up now, so perhaps we could accommodate a question from the floor. Um, 
Did you say economic crisis? Well, in a sense, whether or not there is an economic crisis could be partly a matter of human psychology. There always is sort of a crisis or, I mean, people are in danger of losing their jobs or they may lose their money in one way or another. And we've been thinking of, a, of an economic crisis recently, back to 2008, which is getting ready soon to be four years ago. And things go, go on, though. It sort of depends on how you look at the world. It's besides that, I don't, you might have something else to say. Well, Professor Nash, since you are within the field of economics and mathematics, and I, on the other hand, is within marketing and management, you and I, we may not speak the same language to some certain extent, but there is one language which not only you and I, but also all the rest here today are sharing, and that's the language of music. Now, to me, music has been playing a vital role when overcoming great challenges during my life, and it has inspired my creativity. So my question to you is, what does music mean to you? And has it played or been a vital role in, during your life? Music has, has, been, has been important to me psychologically. Though I have not been, uh, I have not had an instrument, or, or learned an instrument. I have not learned to read music. Um, one influence in my life, I think, was that my mother suffered from a partial deafness. And uh, so she didn't do so much in music. She could sing. She could, uh, her, her deafness related to an illness that she got as maybe an early teen or in between uh, scarlet fever and uh, you start it with normal hearing, but then you have an illness and you have much weakened hearing. And uh, so I didn't, I didn't have, and it wasn't under too much influence to, to, to study music or to play an instrument or anything. And in early years, I did do some choral singing, like uh, singing in choirs that were would sing at a church in the hometown. And uh, so I had a little, little experience in that fashion. Uh, I learned to whistle. <laughs> but I had, I had taste that was uh, developed. My own taste in music was not the same as the popular taste. I, was, I very much appreciated the classical music, like Bach, Pre-Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and I, I didn't appreciate later uh, romantic, the later Romantic music and, and the 20th century music. So uh, I don't know how your taste would have been. <laughs> well, let me give you a response to that. I think you and I, we share a, a similar taste. I listen to Bach and Tchaikovsky and Mozart and that as well. But I have a following up question and that is, has music been an inspiration for you? Have you used it as, as a tool? I don't think I've used it as a tool. I could not say that, no. Thank you for your answer. Good afternoon, um, Professor Nash. Well, I would like to ask a question about how, whether economics is a science. Well, uh, many scientists, especially those in uh, pure sciences like physics, mathematics, chemistry, they have their, their models for the, for the real world. C 
can be uh, either be verified or be negated. But for economics, uh, many of the uh, Nobel let uh, laureates, like uh, laureates that uh, uh, won a Nobel Prize for developing a certain economic model, they lose their money in their own model that is proven to be true. So I think uh, there's, a, there's some problem with economics. It's a, some, some scientists cl claim that uh, e economics simply are subject of using f uh, fancy maths based on groundless assumption. Do you agree with that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't catch all the words as you were speaking. I, I, no. I, my, my hearing, perhaps like my mother's, is by this time it's not, it's not perfect. Um, I think the gentleman was asking whether there is a possibility of having a rigorous scientific treatment to economics or uh, is economics rather more of a social science, or is it a um, rigorous scientific subject? When you use the word social science in the sense that implies that something called a social science is not scientific, <laughs> which, um, which many, many scientists would agree with. And I, I would agree that there's only a, a portion of economics that is really scientific, and there's a, a lot of it is on borderline, but I mean, there, there are many areas that are, are not considered as, as scientific, but that doesn't mean that nobody knows anything and that there isn't anything that can be learned, like the like business administration, just separate that from economics. And, is this scientific? Well, a scientist generally would say, no, that's just a, sort of some practice that's similar to studying law. That you have a lot to learn in law, but it's not science. Oh, so indeed, um, economics can um, have both qualitative and quantitative treatments. And um, since um, mathematics has such a wide application, um, it can certainly be applied to mathematics, uh, to economics, I mean, like um, as evidenced by Professor Nash's contribution to game theory. Well, but on the other hand, um, since economics is still um, contains a lot of controversies, perhaps when we develop a new theory to explain certain economic phenomena, um, there may be voices of opposition. So perhaps Lucien would like to raise a question about this.